knowledge bowling and we're here in a busy center and I got to tell you what, I love busy bowling centers. It's fantastic. I'm getting a lot of questions about the release and there's several questions surrounding how do I manipulate the release? How do I have more end over end roll? How do I have more tilt or access rotation? So I'd like to tell you what I think about the release and how I approach it in my game. What I'm asking you to do is find a certified coach in your area to work with you to make the best version bowler that you can be. But when I think about the release, what I see in most people is that they get in a very strong position when they start. And remember when we start, the bowling shoulders lower than and behind the non-bowling shoulders. First video. And they're in the strong position with their hand directly underneath the bowling ball. And if you put your fingers on your forearm, and your hand is in this position, you're going to feel that the forearm is flexed a little bit. And remember, if the large muscles are tense, the small muscles are going to be tense. We want a relaxed arm swing. So what I recommend is for people to get into this position. I call it a sport position, an athletic position. Some people say it's a weaker position. But with our bowling balls today, we do not need uh, to create more power. And if we create more power, we need more ball speed. So, if you just turn your hand into this position, you're going to notice that that forearm automatically relaxes. And why not start out in a better position? So that's my philosophy. So let's talk about axis rotation. You know, we have the end over end roll, and we have the high tilt, you know, uh, or a lot of spin. And I would say the end over end roll is personified in Walter Ray. I would say Pete Weber, the best on the planet when it comes to that high axis rotation. 90 degrees until you've heard, the, you've heard all that talk about on television. So, how do you get the roll to go from maybe more end over end to more of a higher axis rotation? Well, I like to think about the clock. And if you look at a bowling ball, we want to put six o'clock at the bottom of the bowling ball. So what I have here is a medicine ball because we love props. And I put a number six, hopefully we can get that in the frame here, at the bottom of the bowling ball. And what I like to think about is the clock on the bowling ball. So this is six o'clock, there's a five o'clock, there's a four o'clock, I have three o'clock mark. But here's the key, one o'clock, is all the way back here because the clock isn't one dimensional. The clock is three dimensional. And I think this is where most people make their mistake on the release. When they release the ball, they try to do it this way. And if you notice when I do it that way, my elbow starts facing you and you're off to the right. And all the pins are down that way. We want the release to go through the ball and we want to come out at the one o'clock on the back side of the ball. So let's talk about axis rotation. So if I want end over end roll, I'm thinking about my ring finger being the trigger, as we talked about in the last episode. And I'm thinking about it going through six o'clock, going through the ball, and coming out at one o'clock. So my release is this way. It is not this way. So hopefully we can get a good camera shot on that. It is through six o'clock, coming out at one o'clock, through the ball. Six o'clock, through the ball to one o'clock. That's the biggest thing. If I want to add access rotation, if I want to increase the degrees of tilt, I think about my ring finger going through five o'clock. Now I get a little bit more. If I want to add even more, I think about my ring finger going through four o'clock. And again, if it goes through four o'clock, it goes through four o'clock here and comes through one o'clock all the way at the back of the ball. So again, it's going to look more like this. If you could imagine me holding uh, a, a roll of electrical tape, and I'm going to roll the electrical tape and it's going to spin and go behind me. I do not do this to the electrical tape. I don't do this. I roll the electrical tape. So for you, think about the clock. Think about where you're at on the clock. If you move more towards 3 o'clock, you're going to get a higher axis rotation. If you move more towards 6 o'clock, you're going to get more end over end roll. All right. Thank you very much. This is this was a pretty in-depth one. Send your questions in. I'll help you any way I can. Find a certified coach in your area, and we'll make the best bowler version that you can be so all those pins fall down. Thank you very much.